the reason we are here is simply because we are experiencing a very um, almost dramatic shift in the guidelines when it comes to musculoskeletal problems, uh, chronic back pain, um, many of the standard procedures that are have been used for years are now put into question because of new science, um, better scientific methods of evaluating the efficacy, and also the fact that outcomes are now very important when it comes to selecting the right uh, treatments. So, for instance, surgeries of uh, you know shoulder impingements, meniscus tears, and so on that are very standard are now. Uh, put into question because uh, many uh, conservative methods and even placebos can can achieve similar results. Imaging is also uh, disencouraged because uh, uh, of the many uh, false positive findings. Passive therapies again show no evidence of their efficacy, especially long term, and many insurance systems uh, around the world do not uh, reimburse those anymore. Injections uh, give relief, uh, but again, short term, and in several cases, uh, insurance companies uh, refuse to pay those uh, unless it is followed by active therapies. But when we look at exercise therapy, uh, this is an area that is uh, becoming um, very strongly forward in most of the guidelines and uh, uh, the, the evidence is very clear. It provides uh, substantial help, long-term help, and uh, is, is routinely now prescribed. But uh, if we look at some of the um, articles and, uh, and reviews on, on this issue, this is from an, a series of articles from Lancet. And uh, for the first time that I have seen in the past 40 years, uh, exercise therapy is lifted as the first line treatment that should be considered as a routine use. Um, this is, of course, gratifying since uh, you know 30 years back. Um, anything rehabilitation, active uh, rehabilitation that was in the toolbox always the last last tool. Now it is the first, so this is a very big change. But when we look at the different methods uh, used in, in exercise therapy, we can see that they are far from being optimal. And I just point out a few points. One is that uh, the technology is very, let's say, low tech, old fashioned, and biomechanically not optimal. For instance, this external rotation of the shoulder has its highest resistance at the weakest point of the movement and in the strongest points it has very little resistance so it is exactly the opposite to what it should be the other thing is that with all these tools um, the programs that therapists uh, use they are pretty random every therapist has have, have their own uh, preferences and there is no structured systematic way of of treating patients uh, low, low productivity is an issue uh, it's very difficult to scale something where you need one therapist for each patient and each uh, treatment session. Uh, one area of criticism is the lack of documentation for the old-fashioned methods. Uh, so it's a little bit of a feel-good uh, system and uh, it's very difficult to show the outcomes in a systematic manner. The way data-driven device-based rehabilitation can solve these issues is by offering joint specific uh, optimized biomechanics. This means both the motion itself, but also the loading curve uh, it, uh, matches each joint specifically. And because of that, it is possible to build very standardized programs. Um, with this technology, we can treat up to six patients at the time and uh, we also encourage patients to start self-care, which is actually a completely new income source for many centers. Um, in, uh, I think Dr. Knox will explain a little bit about that as well, but uh, in many places up to 70% of the revenue is actually from self-paying uh, clients that never want to leave the, the, the place. And uh, then uh, when it comes to 
data collection. It's automated fully. And it just collects itself as, as it goes, or the questionnaires are automated and so on. And it is easy to put reports to insurance companies in a, in a very effective way. And if we look at some of the issues uh, comparing the methods, we can see that one is uh, functional training versus isolated. And as you can see, uh, the guy on the left, uh, he is doing the external rotation. But at the same time, you can see that uh, actually the shoulder is moving and is using the scapula instead of using the, the uh, uh, rotator cuff muscles. On the right, however, you can see very, very pure movement, which is fully controlled. And it's almost impossible or practically impossible to cheat in a movement like that. Um, when it comes to spine, one, this is a very, let's say, descriptive uh, uh, picture. You can see on the left uh, a movement which, of course, is working the back, but because there's no restriction as to what muscles are being used, uh, typically weaker muscles work isometrically and the strong muscles work concentrically. So the hip extensors are uh, the muscles that work here. And uh, if you go to any fitness center, you can see people training their back. Uh, the truth is they are actually training their hip muscles, not the back muscles. The way we solve this is by uh, isolating and, uh, and fixating a patient in a certain way so that the uh, stronger muscles that we don't want to get involved are inhibited and the spine is, is fully active and all the movements are fully controlled uh, in the spinal region. Then the other thing is about uh, how to describe these programs. You can either have it qualitative or quantitative and most of the existing uh, programs are qualitative. So we say that we want to exercise the external rotation of the shoulder this is fine, you can maybe have a repetition count and maybe you can put a load, but that's about it. But when you have uh, device-based rehabilitation using data, you can actually prescribe it ex uh, very, very accurately. And uh, by doing this, you can actually turn the values into digital form, meaning that you can both prescribe digitally and then uh, document it digitally. And this opens a whole new uh, possibilities in how uh, data is used to control the whole process and population health process. Uh, we talk that movement is medicine, this is very correct, but like any medicine, too much of it can be dangerous or too little does not help. Again, when you combine uh, structured data uh, with devices, you can create uh, very, very uh, precise prescription uh, methods. Uh, in fact, there are very many different factors that you have to consider when you prescribe loading. Uh, you have to look at the uh, uh, training itself, and then you have to look at the patient. And all of these factors have to be considered when the right uh, program is built. And the way we do it is we have a testing possibility for each device and each joint where we get the, the real strength level of that joint mobility. And then we use templates. We use uh, increasingly um, artificial intelligent algorithms using the background data, using the information um, uh, from the tests and questionnaires and then it will uh, provide optimal programs for each patient. And when it comes to prescribing programs, we also have to make sure that the patient is complying. Uh, and uh, in this respect, uh, we have a graphical interface that will show very clearly uh, to the patient exactly the speed, the range of motion, workload, and so on, and then provide uh, uh, provide uh, feedback as to how well they actually worked uh, the program. And uh, this is a very empowering thing for the patients because they see immediately if they did something good or bad. And interestingly, um, in our center that we use for piloting, we have about 92% we call it compliance in Europe. Uh, I think in, in the US, it's more like quality measure. 
and compliance is something different, but uh, we call it how well they actually uh, took the pill, so to speak. And it's a very, very high percentage on an average, and this is what we see all over the world. We have uh, more than 400 intelligence centers uh, in about 45 countries. This data is from, uh, I think, uh, April and, or, or May, uh, the March, so it's already uh, bigger now. We, we open up about six to seven centers every month somewhere in the world. And also when it comes to number of patients treated, number of tests performed, or number of visits, these numbers are also growing every day. So when we talk about using exercise as a method, we very often get questions like, so what is the difference between the David devices and fitness devices? They look the same to many people. It's very difficult. You have to go to a lot of detail to really understand the difference. So we take an analog here and say that, let's say that David is like a surgeon's knife. You can be very precise. You can get exactly what you are looking for in terms of cutting. And regular fitness devices is like a kitchen knife. So you can cut bread and you can do a lot of stuff with it, but you would not use it for surgery. So this is the difference. You can use the system, our system, for very sick people and be completely confident that it is totally safe and beneficial for the patients because everything is controllable. We use this system all around the world and it's getting recognition, like in Belgium, it is fully reimbursed. Uh, we are working with the Ministry of Health in Saudi Arabia. We have neurosurgeons in the US using the system. So uh, it has become part of the mainstream medical systems and we see this change happening all over the world and as a final uh, point during these covid times it's good to remember that our method of treating patients is optimal for uh, keeping people keeping people socially distanced uh, isolated from environment in a way that they can feel completely confident in our own uh, center here in Helsinki, we have people that are from 75 to 95 year old and they're all very safe in, in our system and they do not feel uh, fear about getting uh, contracted uh, with, with uh, COVID because the system itself is, is always clean. They use gloves, masks and so on. So I urge you to think about this as a, as a potential future marketing and, and uh, uh, let's say, promotional item, because that's what it is. It is uh, a way to treat people in the future.